Hello, hello, everyone. How is everyone doing? So we had a couple of people here. My name is Shashank. I'm a data engineer, uh, but I've worked in the field of data science and analytics for a couple of years now. So uh, I'm here. I do this live stream every Thursday to answer any questions that anyone might have. So Timur Munzor, uh, let's see, data science and AI course is mostly similar. So it kind of depends, right? So it, data science is really the study, or it, it's basically using data to answer questions. That, that, that's really what data science is. Now, what makes data science different from data analytics is uh, typically a, a data analyst will work with data that's already that already exists. So things like um, data analysts typically don't do feature engineering. They typically don't do um, like make machine learning models. They will work from a database of pre-existing data and analyze that data using maybe some basic statistics and um, visualization tools and some data cleanup to report on the business. Um, and which is a bit a uh, bit more technical than what like a BI professional might do, where a BI professional might not know SQL, for example. So a data analyst is kind of like one uh, one step ahead of a BI professional from a technical perspective. And a data scientist is one step uh, ahead of that, where basically they are uh, trying to use data to predict things, um, or they're trying to make data where it doesn't exist. That's where feature engineering and stuff comes in. Now, one of the tools to do that is by using AI. One of the tools to predict is to use AI. Um, so AI is just a tool of, uh, for data scientists, but a lot of courses um, have kind of confused data science with AI. I would argue that AI is really not necessary to get started with data science. It's uh, basic statistics is more important. Python and SQL are more important. And then like the SKLearn type of machine learning. So like your random forests, your um, maybe an XGBoost algorithm, uh, logistic regression, SVM, those are more important to learn first. So uh, hopefully that answers your question. Lin Shu, hello, hello. Roger Shawoko, uh, great to see you. Thank you so much for joining. Rich, great to see you. Chris, great to see you. Oh, so Drew, what do we have here? So apart from SQL, Excel, Python, Tableau, ML, and DL, what's DL? Um, what are the other technical skills we should do to get a boost to stand out from others? Could you list some other tech stack? Um, I'd say that's about it. Like, like here's the thing, right? Like, if you if you know more stuff than that, uh, I'm not sure it is drastically helpful. Like, maybe you would want to learn how to do a little bit of web scraping. That might be useful. Basically. Uh, creative ways to use the Python programming language might be very useful. Um, just like stack classes, any other YouTube channel you would recommend for learning mathematics involved in ML and DL? Um, there is Code Emporium uh, run by my friend um, uh, Jay Halthor. So he runs Code Emporium. Uh, that's a great website to learn more about the technical, like mathematical aspects of machine learning. Um, yeah, but I mean, here's the thing, right? If you've mastered all those skills, my argument is that you should already have a job. Um, and then from there, you can start making decisions as to like what type of a data scientist or data analyst you want to be, right? Like they say that there's like a type A and a type B. I'm reading, um, where is it? I'm reading this book right now. Uh, it's called Fundamentals of Data Engineering. And in it, in uh, the first chapter, they talk about the uh, type A and type B data, an a data scientist. Um, and the type A being the data science that likes to, oh yeah, there it is. Yes. Yeah, so I don't know if you guys can see it, but you'll see they have like type A and type B data scientists. Um, and type A being the type that likes to analyze data and, you know, um, but, but typing being the one that's a lot more inclined to, um, build stuff out there. So I, I would argue that after, if you learn all of those skills, then really you should, you should get into the field and get real work done. And then from there, kind of decide what do you want to learn from there? Because, because there's, an, there's an unlimited number of things to learn. Um, I, I would say demonstrating those skills is how you stick out, you know. And uh, the, my question to you is, have you demonstrated all those skills in public? All right. What else do we have? So DLs deep learning. Nice, nice. Good to know. All right. We're a, bit, a little bit light on the questions today. Vinay Chowdhury, uh, I have a technical interview scheduled tomorrow. Give me some suggestions. Uh, what's the technical interview? You got to give me more information than that, Vinay. Like that's, uh, I, I can't answer a question with no information on it. Um, Melissa Pangillion. Oh, great to see you, Melissa. Thanks for joining. Thanks for joining. 
Roger Oko, um, any advice on how to secure a remote data analytics uh, job in the U.S.? What about the time difference? Eight hours difference from my region. Or uh, do you have a U.S. visa? If you don't have a U.S. visa, then I can't give you much advice because without a U.S. visa, it's difficult to secure a job like that. Um, Lin Chu, going to study MSc Business Analytics in September. Thank uh, I'm, I'm glad the videos are helpful and uh, uh, best of luck to you. Best of luck to you. Um, Melissa Pe uh, Pangila Pangilinen, um, for someone who's not well versed with math, how do you learn to love statistics for DADS? Can you recommend mind tricks and sources? So the good thing is for a lot of data analytics and data science, uh, mathematics is not particularly necessary. A lot of that is abstracted away from you these days with all the algorithms that exist. Um, Vinay, you, you have to be more specific than that. Like, you, you, like what is the technical interview about? Like what, what's going on there? Like what are they going to ask you? What's the company? Um, like that, you know, having seven words is not going to, it doesn't make a good question. You know, I can't really answer that. Um, but sorry, Melissa, to answer your question, um, let's see. Yeah, I, I, feel like, I feel like I've seen your name somewhere before, so maybe that's why. Uh, but thank you so much. Um, oh, hey, David, great to see you. Great to see you. Uh, yeah, Rogers, if you, don't have a, if you don't have a visa, I can't give you much advice. With most U.S. companies, you need a, they, they, they call it work authorization. Uh, without work authorization, you can't just get a job in the U.S. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, otherwise, otherwise everyone would just get a job in the U.S., right? So um, for you, probably, th there's a couple of ways you can, like, get work authorization. You can either um, get a degree at an American university, or you can go with the H-1B visa, or you can do a, um, what would you call it, a uh, transfer program. So work for an inter international company and do a transfer program. Okay, so Melissa, um, sorry, to answer your question. There's a great book called Practical Statistics for Data Scientists, and it teaches you what I call like the minimum necessary statistics you need to know for data science. And the good thing is what you need to know to like work as a data scientist statistically, I'd, I'd ask, is a relatively small amount. Um, you don't need to know that much. And so that's kind of what I would uh, – I, I would recommend looking into that. As far as the mind tricks are concerned, um, I would argue that – the implementation of it is always was always more interesting to me than like writing it all down. And so whenever you learn something, try and code it up in um, uh, in Python. Now, if you don't like coding, that's a different problem because coding is a very you know it, it's uh, I'd argue even more integral to a data scientist job than a statistics is a lot of the time. Um, obviously, depending on what type of data scientist you are. So uh, hopefully that answered your question. I, I, I would go ahead and apply stuff. When I apply stuff, I find myself a lot more interested in it. It's learning stuff theoretically that doesn't make any, that doesn't make much sense to me. Uh, let's see. Paola, welcome, welcome. Great to see you again. Angel, uh, hi mate, I'm living in Venezuela. Do you think I'm able to find a job as a data analyst? Um, that's a hard question to answer. My, my understanding is that the Venezuela economy basically doesn't exist anymore. Um, so I would assume that you would have to leave the country to go find a, find a job. I know a lot of people are finding their uh, way to Chile and Colombia. Um, but I, I, I mean, my only thing I know about Venezuela is that the economy has basically stopped functioning. Um, outside of that, Upwork might be something that you could do. Um, I know that a, um, it, Upwork's a website that I use where you can get paid in US dollars for the work that you do. So, you know, maybe that's something you could do. Um, JQT. Sweet. Nice. We're getting some good questions over here. Um, I fail interview because of the math. I am looking to do of going DBA instead. Maybe work my way to a data analyst. What do you think? So that's an interesting aspect of it. I, I would argue keep going for the data analyst route because a DBA does very different work from what a data, data analyst does. So a, a DBA is a database admin, right? Um, obviously, if you need a job, that you know that, that's a solid job to get. Uh, but I would argue that you should really focus on going for the data analyst stuff more uh, more thoroughly uh, and try again, you know. If it was just the mathematical stuff, then go look for another job because I've, I've interviewed for a lot of data analyst jobs where they, they don't really ask me any math questions, right? So those jobs definitely do exist. Uh, okay, so David, uh, what, do you, what do you do to get yourself out of a funk or feeling burnt out at times? That's a great question. Um, that is a great question. Usually I'll go outside and I'll take a walk. Um, drink a little bit of coffee and then sometimes i just don't work for the day you know if, I, if i'm really burnt out for a day i just won't work because 
I know, I think a trick to being a hard worker consistently in your life is to, um, a, a trick to being uh, con- like, you know, consistently hardworking in your life is to do what you can to avoid getting burnt out. Like, it, it's something I learned from school, right? Like, I had a couple of friends, um, and especially this one friend, I really, res- I, I really respect her work ethic, but um, the, the amount of work that she did um, kind of nonstop without, like, putting her head up to, like, look at, you know, just, like, enjoy the world sometimes um, was... Such that I would, such that I would argue, eventually she would hate working. Um, and then I found myself after I left college doing the same thing. I worked so much that I found myself on a path to hate working. And I think hating work and hating doing hard work is probably one of the most dangerous habits and dangerous like behaviors you can pick up in your life, right? Because if, you know, if you think about it, unless you come from a particularly privileged background, anything that's worth having in life requires work. Whether it's like you know a great spouse, if it's, you know, a great relationship with your parents, uh, your friends, um, a great job, all of this requires hard work. So I think if you're feeling burnt out, then even just taking a day off, um, like, like doing a little bit, right? Because if you're learning a new concept, you should practice every single day, but doing a little bit, but then uh, practicing, uh, I mean, but, but then uh, like, you know, learning to like love yourself and like just remove yourself from that situation for a day uh, might be helpful. It's what I do, right? Because I, I, don't want to ever hate working um, because I feel like when you start hating to work, uh, which happens to a lot of people that get burnt out, um, life gets a lot like, – like, life starts going downwards from there, right? Because anything worth having, unfortunately, requires work. So uh, ho- hopefully I uh, answered your question. What else do we have here? It looks like we got a lot of questions. Uh, and, yes, make sure to like the video as you come in. Thank you so much. Uh, Chemtech 7 what type of training occurs once you land a data analyst position and are you a part of a team of data analysts um, so it depends right some companies will put you as part of a team some companies won't um, I, I would argue that if you can be on a team of data analysts that's always better because um, the jobs where you're not on a team of data analysts there's a good chance that like while you might have more influence as an individual analyst the ability to use more advanced technology and use more advanced solutions for things kind of um, goes away because you are um, you are the only person doing analytics and people kind of need a lot of basic questions answered. Now, if you work on a data analysis team, then you're working with a group of people who uh, you know probably honestly want to do better and want to make and that analytics easier and therefore will adopt more advanced technology. So um, whether you work on a team or not is entirely p- dependent on the job. And usually you can find that out prior to actually accepting a job. I would suggest a job where you get to work with a lot of uh, other data analysts. Um, and as far as training is concerned, um, they don't train you actually. Uh, you have to ask to be trained. So for example, I whatever, whatever company I go to, I ask for an education um, budget basically. Like how much can I spend on like educational materials? Um, I ask my boss what do they believe are the most important technical skills for me to develop? What are the most important soft skills for me to develop? And any good boss of which I'm, I'm just very like I've always had great bosses. Um, after you make it clear you want to learn a certain technical skill and you show them that you're putting in the effort, right? You should have a weekly one-on-one with that boss, right? You show them that you're putting in the effort by showing them code and stuff that you've written, for example. Um, they will put their best effort into putting you onto a project where you actually are learning those skills. So when I say training, I don't mean like actual training. Like like some companies do that, but I've never been at a company that actually trained me. I've uh, But I've been at companies that always respected the fact that I wanted to learn. Um, and I think, you one, I'm very lucky. But two, I've made it very clear to all my bosses that learning is very, very important to me. Uh, and I'll put in 110% for them, but learning is very important for me. They have to go to bat for me for like my, my um, uh, learning as well. So um, training, whenever I say training, that's more of what I mean. I, I've never been formally trained in a job. I've just kind of taken my time to learn stuff. All right, guys, I'm going to get some water real fast. Be right back. Be right back. Okay, what do we have next? Yes, self-development is extremely important. Paula is correct. Um, 
at the end of the day, it's what keeps you competitive in this uh, environment, right? This, it's a crazy environment. Uh, what do we have next? Programmer, please kindly tell me what is the approximate time it would take for, uh, to be a data analyst. I already know to be a Python and R. Please answer to yours. So programmer, I would suggest going and watching the video linked in the description below. Um, roadmap to become a data analyst. All the information should be in there. Uh, Somdev Guduru, sir, I'm 40 years of age, a math lecturer, and I want to shift into data analysis. Yeah, of course. Um, now, I'm based on the way you're talking, I'm guessing you're from India, like, and, and you're like actually in India at the moment. Um, if if uh, you're not, let me know. I can't speak for the Indian market. I know for sure in the American market, we, it, you know, we'll hire. I mean, people will hire 40 year olds. It does not matter. Like, um, there's such a. First of all. It's not legal to discriminate based on like based on age in the U.S. I don't know about other countries, but we have like protections against that stuff here. Um, but second of all, e you know, even if someone wanted to discriminate, like there's such a shortage of data analysts in this country and like people who can actually like do the work compared to uh, the amount of work that needs to get done. Because um, a good data analyst knows SQL, and you know, I mean, at the end of the day, the average American worker is not going to learn SQL at all. Um, like I, I had a lot of anecdotal evidence of, like of telling people. Um, SQL is probably the number one skill that a lot of people in business can learn to up their salary. Like if you're making like 50, 60 K a year and then uh, like as, you know, working some job and in corporate America, but then you learn SQL and you're, now you're like, oh, I can access the databases directly and do, you know, you can do the same job and get paid 30, 40 K more because now you're, you, you, they don't need to go to an analyst for everything, you know, um, which drastically speeds up the iteration process. Long story short. Um, there is a huge shortage of people with these skills in the country. So I would say, at least in the U.S., you know, there's no reason you couldn't get a job. Shreya, I'm a biotech undergrad working out for getting into data analytics, data science. I just wanted to say you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm glad they're very helpful. That, uh, I'm, a, I'm a fellow science grad. I uh, graduated with a degree in chemistry from Emory. Destroyer coming, guys. Um, okay. Uh, hope you're doing well. Would you say it's necessary to learn Power Pivot, Power Query, VBA for Excel? Uh, you just move on to Tableau SQL and Python. In data analytics, no one uses VBA. Um, VBA, I don't know. I've never seen VBA used in a corporate environment where I would think it was a good idea. Um, it is an old language. Well, okay, sorry. That, that's, not, that's not actually a problem with something. Um, it is a language that Microsoft has been trying to deprecate. It's a feature Microsoft has been trying to deprecate for a while on Excel. And like... Yeah, you're better off just using Python, in my opinion. So, yeah, I, I would skip... Uh, well, Power Pivot and Power Query might be useful. Um, depends on the company. I personally have never been at a company that uses them. Uh, but every company uses SQL and Python. And then Tableau... I mean, once you learn Tableau, Power BI is fairly simple as well, right? So... Uh, I followed your Excel tutorial on focusing on that formulas, X lookup. Yeah, formulas, X lookups, and pivot tables. In my opinion, that's just useful for anyone, honestly. Um, like basically anyone can find a use to use Excel that way. Like th those are, th that's not advanced data analytics. So I definitely recommend that everyone learns that. Syed uh, Tariq, I have hands-on experience with SQL, ride sharing company in Bangladesh, recently moved to the EA, UAE. Cool. Yeah, no, that's awesome experience right there. Yeah, Syed, I think that that's great experience over there. Congratulations. Good job for learning all that. Um, ride sharing in Bangladesh. So, I mean, my family's from India, so I'm, I'm aware of Ola in India. What's, the, what's Bangladesh's ride sharing service? Ankit, um, thank you, thank you. Will it be possible for you to do more project-based Python and SQL? Yes, yes. Uh, I actually have a video coming out next week that's going to be really cool. Um, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, Dhruv, uh, I feel like there's a lot more to explore in the data, DS and ML domain. I don't know whether the inquisitiveness is necessary, but I want to learn more skills in alters and click. Um, the inquisitiveness is good. I would also suggest that you don't get distracted by every like new thing that happens. And that's very much me, right? I get distracted by every new thing that I see out there. Um, focusing on improving a, a, a subsect of skills will get you a lot further than knowing a bunch of different skills, in my opinion. Um, so it's kind of like they say you need to be a T-shaped person, right? Where uh, you have a wide knowledge of a lot of different subjects, but you're very good at something in, in particular, you know? So that, that's what uh, I, I would recommend. Can an Indian apply for an internship abroad? Um, sure. It's like, oh, well, internship, I've, I've never heard of a U.S. company giving an internship to um, someone who doesn't have an OPT at least. Uh, so, or OTP. Is OPT OTP? I don't know. Um, 
Hello, what are the key things to learn in order to transition from data analytics to data engineering? Uh, how is cloud computing going to affect stuff in the future? Um, first of all, every, basically everything's going to move to the cloud. Um, I'm curious to see how that, because cloud, cloud computing requires a different set of skills from on-premise in that like on-premise you were really worried about usage because you didn't want to clog up the systems for everyone. In cloud computing, you're worried about the usage because you don't want to run up a huge AWS bill on accident, right? Because they bill you based on usage, and none of these none of these platforms have tremendous like, as far as I'm aware, none of these platforms have like tools that automatically turn it off based on a certain amount of spend um, automatically, um, you know. And so, cloud computing will be everything about data engineering in the future, in my opinion. Um, and I will create a video of the transition from data analytics to data engineering. Long story short, um, really buff up your coding skills. At the end of the day, a data engineer is a software engineer working in data. Um, really buff up those coding skills. That's really, really important. You'll need that to pass the technical interviews. Um, also learn systems design interviews. There's a really cool um, like thing called Byte Byte Go, B-Y-T-E, B-Y-T-E Go. Um, it's like a service platform, I don't know. It's like a learning company. Uh, and they have great free tutorials on uh, systems design and stuff like that, which I find very interesting. Melissa P P P P P P um Cool. I'm, I'm glad I answered your question. Thank you, Maury. Thank you, Jacques. Firefreak, is it possible to learn VBA, SQL, and Excel in 10 weeks, or is that too extreme? Oh, no. If, if you actually like are putting, a, putting in a significant amount of time every week, then sure. I, I think you totally could. I'm a data analyst with SQL Tableau experience. I want to learn Python. Where should I start? I have a Python course on my YouTube channel. I'll start with that. Um, I'm a workaholic and I'm trying to change. It's hard for me coming from the hustle culture. Um, well, I guess it depends, right? Like, like at the end of the day, um, compared to a lot of my friends, I would probably be considered a workaholic. Uh, but I, I mean, I would also say that I don't believe a lot of them work as much as they should. Um, you know, so it, you know, it really uh, workaholic is very much a uh, term that depends on the person, right? Like if you want to accomplish great things in life, there is going to be a uh, price to be paid um, or even, you know, what they say, right? Like no matter what the price will be paid, it's like, you know, you either work hard today, save up money and, um, you know, ensure a good living or you pay for it tomorrow and something else, right? So while I definitely do encourage finding a balance, uh, I would also say um, don't get suckered into the idea of, people are kind of obsessed with this idea of balance. Um, where I, I think like, you know, like balance is a state that like, it also means you're not really moving anywhere. Um, that's what balance kind of means to me. So like, I like the analogy of juggling, right? Where like, you know, when you juggle balls, right? What's the most important ball? It's the one that's falling. So, you know, you catch that, you throw it and then you give it energy, right? Like when does stuff happen? It happens when you give it energy. Um, that's true of your career, your relationships, everything. When you give it energy, when you put effort into it, that's when stuff happens. That's when something exciting happens, right? Uh, and make sure to catch it on the way down and give it more energy again. Um, that's kind of how I see my life. And I, I, whenever I read about very successful people, that it seems that their lives are run a similar way, where they're constantly juggling um, instead of balancing. But that's a whole different uh, uh, set of analogy we can get into. All right. How much time do you give up? Um, what do we have next? On hell, any advice for people working remotely for employers at other countries? Um, oh, yeah, in that case, use Upwork. Um, you, use some third party if you can't agree on a payment method. Um, now, that is a good – oh, you know – oh, I just realized, yeah, if you're in Venezuela – yeah, the U.S. sanctions Venezuela, right? Um, if, I can't help you there. Um, if the U.S. sanctions your country, I'm personally not exactly sure what to do outside of like taking Bitcoin or something. Um, that 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 that's a yeah. If if you work in like Russia, North Korea, Iran, or Venezuela, like I'm not really I, like I personally can't give you advice because I work in the United States. And if the U.S. sanctions your country, then I, I don't know how to operate outside of the American banking system, quite honestly. So um, sorry, I, I I don't I'm not the right person to ask for that. Okay, Anish, I got a JSON file dumped with four gigs of data and I want to do some feature engineering on it, but I'm unable to load it into a Jupyter notebook. Well, it's probably a little bit too big. Um, so look up uh, how you can load it into a Spark notebook or a Spark cluster. Uh, that's probably a better bet. Four gigs is not, four gigs is not too large. You should be able to load, I mean, unless, you're, unless your system doesn't have enough memory. Um, 
Another thing I would do is I would load it into a Jupyter Notebook and uh, use the num rows feature of Pandas to limit the number of rows that are brought in and only bring in like the top like 100 rows or something. Um, and then use something like Numba to, you know, iterate through it, uh, you know, later with uh, if your computer isn't strong enough and you, and you can't pay for the cloud, uh, like a cloud implementation of that. Uh, Syed, 100 jobs uh, here in Dubai through LinkedIn, no luck, uh, may, maybe because of not having any references. Yeah, I mean, I was in the same position you were. Uh, a couple of years ago, I applied to 100 different jobs, didn't get any responses until eventually a company responded to me, right? So just keep at it and then see if maybe there's a pro like if you're sending in the same application to every single company, that could be the problem. Um, you have to send in a special, like a customized resume per company, in my opinion, or per job, really. Um, and definitely look for references if you can find them, so. Syed, is it Syed Hassan? Is it possible to get an honors on uh, an online honors degree in data science? I don't know personally because I don't have a, I don't have an interest in getting a data science degree. Um, I've seen the curriculum of a lot of data science programs. I wouldn't say they, they're particularly impressive personally. Um, so personally, I'm not too interested in it myself. So I'm not exactly sure. I used to be, but then you know I realized that you don't need a degree to become a data scientist. So um, yeah, I, I apologize. I don't, I don't have much great advice on that. Uh, Runjo, uh, love your content. Thank you, thank you. I would love to know more about your boot camp. Um, yeah, so I'm, the boot camp's already running. We're already like, you know, we, we have full capacity and everything. So I'm not taking on anyone else um, at the moment because, you know, we want to maintain a certain level of quality, which requires that I keep the people under a certain amount. Um, so I will announce it next time whenever, I, whenever we have a, uh, a, another class. Uh, but to give you the basics, the uh, there's a job guarantee. You're going to make at least $50,000 a year after you um, uh, leave the boot camp or you don't pay. Um, the fee structure is $15,000, but you don't pay any of it at the beginning. You pay it only after you get a job. So at the beginning, I think it's like $250 or something like that just because we need some kind of income. Um, but the $15,000 also guarantees you 24-7 support. You get full access to me. I do weekly sessions over Zoom with you. Uh, and then you get like time with me every single week as well and a bunch of other teachers and a lot more content as well. Um, plus the job guarantee. In my opinion, every bootcamp worth its salt should offer a job guarantee. So um, I am a BA, but, I work, but my work tasks are more like BIDA, okay. Should I quit and look for a better title? Ooh, that's an interesting question, Jiachen Yamashita. Um, I wouldn't quit and look for a better title. I would look for a better, better title and quit. You should almost never quit a job before you have a new job lined up. Now, of course, if your employer is abusive, you know, you, have, you, know you, have, you have your exceptions, right? Like use common sense here. Um, that being said, you should almost never quit a job prior to getting a new job for two reasons. One, um, you know, lost income, lost experience, uh, and it could take up to six months for you to find a new job. And then two, um, you can always take that offer you have from a new employer, give it to your current employer and see what they'll give you for it. Some companies, uh, you know, if it's, if, if they're that desperate to keep you, they may even offer you more than the future employer. So, you know, something to, uh, keep an eye out on. Volker, uh, I'm a data analyst, not much experience, not a few projects worked on, hard time taking my job posting. What do you suggest I do to get interviews? I'm tailoring your resume is really where, to, where, where it all comes down to. Um, I would also recommend doing a lot of LinkedIn, um, like tailoring your LinkedIn, get LinkedIn premium, reach out to a lot of recruiters, reach out to people at the company. Um, your first your first job, right? It, basically until you reach, I think like three years of experience, um, it's going to be a lot of legwork. Um, for me, see today, I'm really lucky. Now my LinkedIn inbox is just full of recruiters, right? Um, but, uh, Prior to me getting three years of experience, it was a lot of work to get people's attention. Uh, my even like my I thought my resume was pretty good, and like it was difficult. So um, it very much is a numbers game prior to um, your your first uh, three years of experience, and then it gets a lot easier. So uh, just keep at it. Krishna 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 Krishnanand. Nair, this self-development is on your own time, not company time, right? I always did it on company time and my own time. Um, the way I did it, right, is I, I always like would get my work done um, and work really hard and then kind of like, 
here's the thing, right? Like, this is something that's important to remember whenever you're employed, right? Um, firing people in America is not easy, even in a state like Texas, if only because once you fire them, you have to go find a new employee. Um, and so what you have, I mean, obviously you don't want to dance that line between getting fired and like, keep it, like that's not what you want to do, right? You want to perform excellently for your boss, right? But I would, but I, it's okay to push back and be like, hey, I need a little bit of time to learn um, in this job uh, in order to, you know, do better for the company. Um, so the reason I brought up the fire thing is don't be afraid to push back on your boss a little bit and say, hey, I need this time for myself to get some, like, you know, learning done. That way I can do better for the company. Any good, first of all, any good boss will understand and not even question that, right? As long as you're getting your work done, any boss will not question you taking a little bit of time to, like, learn for yourself. Second, in this industry, this is a, this is a tech job, right? This is like... Like, like software engineering is a tech job, this is a tech job. Like the skills are constantly, like the, the, the skill ceiling keeps going up, the amount of things you need to know keeps going up. Um, if people aren't learning at the job, then the company is falling behind in that, in that space, right? Um, and, and any good job will treat it that way. So I would say the self-development, yes, um, a lot of it is going to be on your own time, uh, but some of it can be on company time too, in my opinion. And it, it in my opinion, any company that, you know, actually, wa- like, it, it, I work in engineering now, right? And in my opinion, it's very like it's very important for bosses to be okay with their engineers playing around with tools. Like Google has that whole twenty percent policy. I think it's a tremendous policy because there's a lot of great discoveries that you make whenever you uh, play around with tools. And it's very important that like engineers enjoy working with the tools that they work on and they enjoy learning um, because that's where like engineering improvements in companies come from. Um, they rarely come from a sprint board, in my opinion. Um, they come from people just playing around and they're like, wait a second, this is a much better way to do this thing. This is a much better way to do that thing, you know? Um, so I, I would argue that there's always like a, a an amount you can push back on that. Um, but yeah, th- that's what I would recommend. Do, do it on the company time, do it on your time as well. All right, guys, I have about three more minutes that I need to head out. I need to head out. Uh, can you speak Hindi? I do not speak Hindi. Thank you so much, Paolo, for helping out, by the way. Rahul, I got laid off because of lack of politics because of economic crisis in the U.S. Um, so, yeah, so the U.S. is currently going through a recession. Um, a lot of people don't know it, but it totally is. Um, there are a lot of jobs available, though. So, you know, just keep looking. If you are location flexible, as in you're able to move locations, that makes you the hottest, co- like, you know, you're the hottest commodity by far then. Um, do... At the end of the day, you want to find some way to become like a hot commodity, something that like where if you get laid off, you will just find a new job because you are uh, someone that people want to hire. Companies are fighting after you, right? So like I would argue that you need to find some way to like become that eventually. That being said, um, yeah, there is a a recession in the U.S. right now. I think think technically speaking, like all the indicators say we're already in one. but you know, keep at it, keep looking for jobs. There are jobs available, like I know that for sure. Um, recruiters are still reaching out to me for jobs. Um, and try and get something before the winter because when the winter comes, that's when you know hiring in general just goes down. So just uh, keep at it and we're here to support you. Are your offices opening? Um, the company I work for does not have offices. It's a remote company, so, or they have, sorry, they have offices, but it's a remote first company. All right, Roston Graphics, great to hear that, great to hear that. Groovy Tirma. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, you know, I go back to Ch- I go to Chennai every once in a while, you know. Um, so, Groovy, great to hear you. Great to hear hear from you. I thought I saw something about during the live stream. Uh... <laughs> That's funny. Uh, let's see what else we got. All right, so I think it is time for me to go. Ankit, how much time do you give for freelancing? I actually uh, quit a little while ago. Um, it just wasn't worth my time anymore, quite honestly. I, I the, the, the thing is, if once you move high up, high up enough in tech, um, if you are working for the right companies, freelancing does not make any sense, uh, like economic sense even, because you're better off just getting raises and getting promoted um, because tech companies pay so much money these days. Um, so I, I, I would say, uh, freelancing was great for me in an earlier life. Now it doesn't make much sense to me because of the, uh, pay packs that I receive. All right, guys, I am going to head out. Thank you guys so much for joining. Make sure to like the live stream if you haven't already. Uh, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day.